I was asked to do an encore. So like Russell Crowe and Gladiator, I, I was, I screwed that one up. <laughs> I was asked to do an encore. So like Russell Crowe and Gladiator, I, I'll ask, do you want more? Promise to keep it hot like a radiator, but I, I won't get hardcore because that'll be a bore and I want your profits to soar. So I'm going to show you some tricks on recurring revenue, but before I do, I thought I'd drop this rhyme for you. Now my rhymes, they might not be complex, but I figured what the heck. And I don't understand I am a pentameter, but that doesn't matter to her. She wants to know how to manage her cash flow so she could make her business grow, so she could be sipping a 64 Bodo in a French chateau. So if you're so inclined, let's design a price so nice I want to buy twice. <laughs> All right, so we're talking strategies behind profitably pricing recurring revenue here. And next slide, and next slide. Oh, and I gotta turn this thing on. <laughs> that would help. All right, um, because after this talk, you will not be this person at the end of the year. <laughs> you will look at your financial statements and you will not be you're like, where did my profit go? This is a bad year. This is what I wanna prevent you from, from happening to you, all right? So, uh, but a little bit about me first. So, and this is where you get out your phones and start scrolling Instagram because you don't care for me to ramble on about how great I am. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what, because what you really want to know is who the hell am I and why should you listen to me? And the answer to that is really, really simple. Because I'm on the stage with the clicker, damn it. Next slide. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, is that joke getting old? Because I made it a couple times, but I just love it. <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I had an agency for eight years. It's still around in some some version of another, but my sister runs it. But um, And then what I noticed, though, was a lot of my friends struggled with money. And I could help them with it because that was my background. So this, this is how this all came about. So this is how I'm going to share this with you, what I've done to help people over the last four or five years. So... Um, in two minutes, though, I'm going to do something that you wouldn't think somebody that talks about money would do. I'm going to convince you not to take $100 because I'm ready to give $100 to everybody in this audience. So, um, and here you go. So, who in here right now, if I would give uh, $100 to, would take it? So, pretty much everybody would take $100 right now except Kathy. Kathy's like, I don't need $100. <laughs> So, all right, now what if I said to you, I won't give you $100 now, but in February 5th of 2024, so a year from now, I will give you $105. Who would take $105 in a year versus $100 today? Any takers? Any takers? All right, we got a couple, we got a couple. What if I do this? What if I offer you $125 in a year from now, guaranteed, versus $100 today? Any takers? So we got a couple more, a couple more hands. Now, what if I say I'll throw in two Benjamins, a Franklin, and a Lincoln? So $225. Any takers on that? Pretty much everybody now um, is going to take that money in uh, a year from now. So what did that prove? Oh, did I screw up that? Did I have the wrong one? <laughs> now we have another HDMI issue. All right, no, we don't. All right, so what are we doing here? Okay, so what did we prove? We proved that money has a time value. Okay, so what does that mean? That means like you would we you would take you would give up a hundred dollars now for more money in the future. So that so over time you'll take more money. So, um, and that's the thing about recurring revenue. Recurring revenue is letting your clients pay you over time. So if you let your clients pay you over time, you should expect more money because we just proved that if you're selling something for 100 bucks today, you would want more money in the future to put the delay getting paid on that, okay? So, um, so what we want to do is charge extra for letting them keep our money for longer. And this is called a time premium because we're letting them uh, have more time to uh, pay us. Now, I had a client, um, and he would go to Vegas every six weeks. All right, and he was on a monthly billing. And then when he would come home from Vegas, he was always canceling his credit card. 
okay? So, <laughs> and then we'd have to chase them down because we needed a new, a new credit card number, new this, and it was a hassle. And it took time away from us being able to work on client business to chase them down for that money, you know? And then we had those clients that we invoiced them. And, you know, it seems like as soon as the invoice goes out, they disappear. We can't get a hold of them. They, 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 they don't want to pay us. So, um, and when they don't pay us, what we could do, you know, we, we could always sue them. But, you know, sue them costs a lot of money. You know, it's not cheap to sue them. And then um, we could win. We're definitely going to win, you know, if we have a contract. And if you don't have a contract, Nathan has his monster contract. It'll be sure that you'll win in court. But... Um, you know, the thing about winning a lawsuit, that's not the hard part. The hard part after you have a lawsuit is actually collecting the money. Because if you ever won a lawsuit and th then you have to actually get the person to pay you, it's a lot harder than it seems. So what we need to do there is charge extra to compensate for the people that aren't going to pay us. So, for example, if you charge, um, I'll get to that. So, and that's called a default premium because a default means they're not going to pay you, you know. Um, so what we do is, this is the usual situation. You know, we have a $10,000 product, okay. And um, if, we, if we break that down into recurring revenue, we'll say, hey, over 12 months, that breaks down to $833 a month. All right. And then the way I'm suggesting is your price is still $10,000, okay. And we put a 15% time premium on there, which is $1,500. So now we're charging them $1,500 because that $10,000 is ours, you know, and giving them the right and us giving up the ability to have that money today, we charge them $1,500 to pay us over the next 12 months. All right, and then we also have a $10,000 price and now we have a default premium for them, okay? And, uh, the default premium then is 500 bucks. All right. So this breaks down to $1,500 in, um, in your time premium, $500 for your default premium. Okay. It gives you a $12,000 price, and that's $1,000 a month. So what does this allow, though? So you say that, and why, why we do that 500 for risk is so if you have 20 clients on this, and then one decides to stick you, okay? That is, um, so that would be, he cannot pay you and you'll still make the same amount of money because 20 clients at $10,000 is $200,000. 19 clients at 12,000 is still $200,000. So you don't have to, you, you could try to, uh, try to collect the money from them, but if you never can, you don't lose any money because you've protected yourself there. So um, here's a variation. So you you have to pay out of pocket there's a lot of project costs you know maybe you're bringing in some contractors or something like that to do this job or something like that so you figure out what those project related costs are what's going to cost you up front and that's what you charge them you charge them four thousand dollars up front and then you have six thousand in recurring revenue you add a nine fifteen percent which is nine hundred dollars you add five percent which is three hundred dollars and you have seventy two hundred dollars which breaks down to six hundred dollars a month all right and uh, so you get four four thousand up front, and then you get six hundred dollars a month for the twelve months. So um, what numbers are right for you? Now I'm giving you twenty percent is a, a, a pretty good safe figure, but maybe you have may, maybe you have clients that are really hard to get a hold of to pay sometimes, and maybe you want more of that. Maybe you just personally feel that you're that guy that said, "Hey, I need double my money if I'm letting you have it for a year." So you, you raise that fifteen percent, but twenty percent is a good number. So, um, so right here, um, uh, we have proposals. So moving on a little bit, we have uh, you, you send out a proposal, all right, and you're really excited. The client's gonna agree to this proposal and you send it out, and you're super happy. And then they say this, <laughs> you, you're like, no, 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 you can't get a discount. Stop, you know. Uh, but you know they're gonna say that. So, um, but I want you, when they ask that question, when they say, can I get a discount, instead of getting that pin in your stomach, I want you to say, yes, hell yeah, you can get a discount, you know, and um, I'll give you $2,000 off. And they're like, great, 2000 you know, and, um, uh, and then, but it drops your price to $10,000, all right? 
So we're not going to say uh, no, because no could be controversial, and no could be confrontational. Yes, but you put an and on there. So you're not, you're not, doing, you're not just saying um, uh, no to them, you're saying yes. Because when you say yes, it's disarming, because they're like, can I get a discount? And then all of a sudden you say yes, right off the top, and they're like, oh, 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 oh okay, this is, this is cool. And then, because here's the normal. I say our price is $10,000, we get 50% down, and then we get 50% uh, months later when the project is completed. And you know, like if they don't have the money, they're not gonna get to their content, it's content, or they're not gonna launch their website, it's gonna drag on and everything like that, so it could be paying the ass. Here's what I say, when you do it this way, your price is $10,000, okay? You get 10,000 plus 2,000, you do the recurring revenue way, okay? So you're up $2,000, but it took you a year to get it. If they say they want a discount, you say, yes, I'll give you a discount. I'll give you $2,000 off, but I want my 10,000 immediately. So what does this do? One, it gets you your 10,000 that day, you know, versus having to wait till the project's completed or having to wait a year to get it, you know? But a lot of times you're, you think of yourself, my client's not gonna have $10,000 to pay me, okay, uh, right up front. So you've already disarmed them with the, by, by saying yes to the discount. Now you've taken that question off the table because you've said yes, what else can they do for that? But you're just saying, but yeah, but you gotta give me $10,000. And they're like, I can't give you 10,000. Well, I can't give you a discount. So that, that's, that question is handled very smoothly. It doesn't turn confrontational. It doesn't turn, they don't feel like you, you, you don't feel like they disvalued you and you, they don't feel like you're ripping them off. So like I said, either way you're better off and it transfers something, a question that can be, uh, advantageous, I mean controversial and confrontational into something that could be advantageous. Okay, but you know, deep down inside, when somebody says this question, we just have this gut feeling to say never, because if you've ever gone on the online forums and stuff like that, Facebook groups, when somebody asks this question, everybody says, you never discount because you're worth, you know, charge what you're worth, all this kind of stuff, which is good stuff, but maybe, maybe not like taken so literally. Because here's the thing, what's your goal in this situation? Your goal is to deliver, at least I hope, to deliver a product or service that will change their lives, you know, that will benefit them, that will improve them, and it will improve your life because, you know, you're making money off it and they're getting a service that's really helpful to them. All right? So in this, we're creating this win-win situation. <laughs> if, you, if you ever, Monte Python fans, <laughs> I love that movie. So, but this is what you think they're, this, <laughs> this is what you think they're saying to you, you know, but it's not. Because if we agree the goal is to make their life better, and as a result, yours, you know, you shouldn't look at a discount as a request as a red flag, okay? Because it's not a referendum on your wealth, I mean on your worth. It's not. It's just a question they were trained to answer. They don't know what else to say. It's like you go into a, a store to buy a pair of jeans. You're in that store to buy a pair of jeans. That salesperson comes up to you. What do you say to them? Just looking, <laughs> you know, because we're taught to say that. Prospects are taught to say, you know, can I get a discount? And they're not at a grocery store, but, you know, when they're dealing with people, uh, they're, they're taught that. So it's just like when we're, um, uh, when you have kids and you want to get them to eat your vegetables, you don't, like, force them to eat your vegetables and get mad when they don't eat the vegetables. You might turn it into a game or something like that or put something on them so they'll eat the vegetables. You know, so it's a win-win, or they could play extra video games if they eat the vegetables. I don't know. I'm not a parent, so this is going to be bad advice. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, use these, we use these tricks and tactics to get the end result that we want is the kids to eat the vegetables. So um, now I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to profit more and uh, worry less. Okay, so meet Jenny here. Jenny's a rock star developer, all right? And she thinks she's having a great month, okay? A lot, of, a lot of deals come in and everything like that. But then in a month, she thinks to herself, she's like, man, where's my money? She's like, I thought I had a great month, but I'm kind of stressed out to pay these bills. Because the thing is, cash is king and queen. And what sets small businesses apart from small, from larger businesses is cash flow management. All right? So I want to ask you some questions here. And I want to change your thinking a little bit and, and think about this. I'm, maybe some of you heard the story. So um, you're, it's Thanksgiving, and grandma's there, and dad's cooking, and grandma's cooking too, and then the, the daughter says, you know, dad, why'd you rip the turkey wings, uh, turkey legs off the turkey? You do this all the time to cook it in the pot. And he says, well, that's just what grandma does. 
And grandma looks at him and says, the only reason I did that was because the pot was too small to fit the legs in. So <laughs> it's just what the dad did that because that's just what he was, that's what you're seeing. That's just what he does. So, so I want to, uh, with that in mind, I want to ask you this question. So that's actually, no sound, but that's actually Bill in the first of the month. And so um, what is so sacred about the first of the month? For some reason, we have this in our head that all sorts of things have to happen on the first of the month. And one of them is to pay our bills. Okay, on the first of the month, we're, 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 we're you know, we think, okay, on the first month, we have to pay our bills. And, you know, but here's what I, and so we get our recurring revenue on the first of the month, and we pay our bills on the first of the month. But what happens in that situation where, uh, like my client in the past that we got rid of, thank God, but my client in the past that um, would go out of town and his credit card wouldn't go through, or somebody's late with their check, or the, it was a holiday and the mail didn't come, or just whatever happened, they got busy and forgot to, and, you had, and then, so you're paying your bills, hoping to get that money in, and what happened, and if you don't get that money in, maybe you can't pay your bills. So, um, so I say change the date that you pay your bills from November 1st, to, okay, so if, to November 5th. Okay, just from the first of the month to the fifth of the month. So um, I would have had those updated for February. But yeah, so we want to change from first of the month to the fifth of the month. And what this crate is crate wiggle room, because you're getting all your money in on the first, and you're not paying out your money to the fifth. So if there's a problem, if there's a shortfall, you know you have five days then to then go in and try to figure it out. Be like, call up this client, hey, look, you need to pay me, or you need this, or maybe you need to transfer money in, or maybe you need to do something. But you have five days, because the last thing your, your, your team members want to hear is, oh, I can't make paycheck or payroll or something like that. Now, you might think to yourself, Nev, that sounds great, but you know my rent's due on the first, people want paid on the first, why? Again, think of the story with the pot. Why, why do they want paid on the first? You know, Because it's just something that's been happening. I used to pay my team the 5th and the 20th, when, when I had, like, years ago when I had a business where I had a, 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 um, a lease and everything like that, we paid on the 5th. You know, landlord grumbles in the beginning, but, you know, like, okay, I'm paying you on the 5th, deal with it, because, you know, he doesn't want to have to go out and replace it. So as long as you pay him every month on the 5th, he's not going to complain that much. So um, you can't, you can negotiate with, with vendors and everything like that to pay them on the 5th. And this creates you wiggle room, because that's what we want. We want room to, for our cash flow not to stress us out. All right, and uh, so the other thing that we could do is um, uh, a reserve account. So, um, and how much do we have in our reserve account? We should have, uh, I get this question all the time, we have six months of expenses, six months of uh, uh, what our monthly expenses are. So, um, I actually did, a, I wrote an article a couple years back for a Business Insider, and uh, I talked about, uh, figuring out your runway, okay? And um, what you do is really simple. You take your monthly recurring revenue, you minus your expenses, and that creates a gap, okay? So if you have 10,000 coming in in recurring revenue and you have 15,000 in expenses, you have 5,000 shortfall every month in your recurring revenue. So you need to be 5,000 in on top of that. If your monthly recurring revenue exceeds your expenses, like somebody yesterday told me, um, that's fantastic. That means you can run your business with no cash flow problems. Um, and then you take the money you have, any savings you have, and that's your available cash. And um, so you add, uh, so you add, you add that up, and then you divide your available cash by the gap. So if you have, um, if you have ten thousand in recurring revenue, and you have twenty thousand in cash, and so that gives you twenty thousand dollars, and you have, uh, and you have a shortfall of five thousand every month. That means you could run your business for four months with, with making no new sales. So you don't have to worry. So if you have a bad month one month, you're not worried about it. If you have a bad two months, you're not worried about it. It's good to get to about six months on there. Um, the longer you have, um, the, the better. Uh, I remember I was dealing with, with, with a client who had 19 months when the pandemic happened, and he was like not stressed out at all because <laughs> he knew things were going to bounce back within that time. So. So yeah, I just kind of went over this uh, quicker. So here's some takeaways. All right, all of them at once. So um, time and money are related, so we should price properly. We should get rewarded for letting people hold our money for longer. You know, we're not we're not a charity. We're not 
you know, banks aren't going to give you interest-free loans, you know, uh, so wh why should you give your clients that? So cash is king, and um, discounts are, uh, can lead to better and more profitable results if handled right. All right, and um, discount, re discount requests aren't about your skill. It's just the prospect's default response to, you know, being shown a price. All right, now I want to talk about, I feel it's wonderful to be at WordCamps. I feel our community is wonderful. I feel that we could afford to be here, be around each other, hang it out. I think it's, I think we have, I think it's, it's a blessing. I think we have a lot of blessings in life. You know, we, we could run, we could work with fabulous companies, we could run our business, and I think that's pretty special. All right, um, and open source and is, um, is, is a great way, you know, giving back to the WordPress community, Five for the Future, everything like that, being able to help clients, being able to give back to our communities and everything like that. We do that from our heart. But then we have our brain that tells us, hey, we got to make money. We're in business to make money. You know, it would be ruthless, you know, uh, those kind of things. You know, we can't, we can't show weakness in business and everything like that. So, but, um, so the heart goes that way and thinks, care is caring and the brain's like all about money then see and so it's always a give and take if if you're if you're caring about business if you're giving back if you're doing this kind of thing you're 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 being less profitable and everything like that and then if you're if you're being like a, a capitalist if you're being a good business owner you're not leading with your heart you're not caring as much and i i think both of them could be combined okay i, I think we can lead with our heart and our mind. We can be really profitable and really caring at the same time. Because, like, um, and when that happens, there's a lot of charities out there, and there's a statistic that 99% of char charities are un unfunded because I think there's 100-some thousand charities out there. So if we do what I'm talking about here, we could then get into philanthropy. We could then, if we're, we're, we're making more money and everything like that, if we're following these messages, we're more more profitable business, we could get into being able to Give back, say, give back to Five of the Future, give to that local charity in, in, in your area and everything like that. So, um, and I think the best way to do that is actually through capitalism. So, like, like I said, making money, doing all the stuff that I'm telling you to make more money. And uh, because here's the thing, and I'm not talking this guy's form of capitalism. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about a, um, I'm talking about this form. In the past 20 years, extreme poverty has collapsed from a whopping 94% to 10%. You know, and here's the chart of when we started embracing these principles. And they've gotten out of control, I, I think. And, um, and that's why I think we need to be, do more a form of compassionate capitalism. And I think it, it could be more profitable and more caring at the same time. And because I think what we learn here in all these word camps and all these talks to, be, to run a better business, I think we can um, change the world. And I think that's really great. So here's my challenge to you, is to redefine capitalism, all right? And because here's what I'd like to see one day. I would love to see, you know, when, you, when your kids or your grandkids, when they're at, you know, when they're in second grade and they're at that career day, and, you know, so Susie stands up and she says, and she says, I want to be a firefighter because firefighters, they go into burning buildings and they save people's lives. And uh, Jimmy stands up and says, I want to be a vet because I love animals. And, you know, vets, they take care of sick animals. And I just, I just think that's wonderful. And then your kid stands up. And he says, she says, I want to be a capitalist because my mom's a capitalist. And she makes the world a better place. Thank you. That's my talk. Any questions? I have the mic. Oh, I got to get the body in motion first, too. <laughs> sure. Just curious, in terms of recurring revenue, so you presented sort of a pricing structure. What about, I was sort of hoping to hear some brainstorming, maybe from other attendees, about Ways to increase one's recurring revenue in my WordPress business, website care packages, affiliate links. Is, can we talk about that a little bit? Sure. About options for how to increase returning recurring revenue as sort of side hustles. 
in your business? So, well, um, I think offering. Uh, so, what what I showed you there, if you if if you want to increase, you could take any product and create it into a recurring revenue product. So, like like I said, you just have to like if you take a ten thousand dollar product, you could break it down into one thousand dollars a month for twelve months, and that creates recurring revenue. So, for you, if you want to do like care plans, are a great way to have uh, recurring revenue. You could do. Uh, um, uh, what are some other uh, ways to create recurring? You you could uh, have you know some kind of like maintenance care plan. You could do um, what do we used to do when we would uh, create recurring revenue? Um, we would do like retainers, you know, where um, where we would give X number of hours um, for consulting kind of uh, stuff like that. Uh, you could sell um, uh, products and stuff like that are a great way to create recurring revenue. Um, yeah. There's a great retreat, recurring revenue retreat. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I gave, I think the first time I gave this talk was that recurring revenue. It was. <laughs> that's why it's pre yeah. That's why it's called profit and pricing for recurring revenue. <laughs> it happens in November, the weekend before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great talk. It's really it's intimate. It's, it's fantastic. Christina Romero and um, shit, I forget the guy's name. Was that? No, no, no. Oh, I can't think of his name. To yeah. My phone. Yeah, no, no. It's, 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 he does that Disney stuff. Oh man, I can yeah. just picture him. But anyways, though, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really great. Yeah, it's really nice. I. It's recurring revenue retreat. That's the R three recurring revenue retreat. We are in a room of wealthy people. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll make the. I'll put. I'll put these slides in there. Yeah, definitely. To repeat it for the recording, the question was: Would the, will the slides be available? Yes. See in the dark. <laughs> I know, and I'm staring right at a light. Oh, this is hell getting on, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you. Um, so you, you kind of one of the slides I think that would have been very helpful to us. You kind of went over it really quick. Can you go back to it? And if you use big numbers, when you were actually showing the breakdown on how to um, get re the one with all the amortization and the arrow. Can you give like a give an example, big numbers, so we can actually gonna see it. What, which side? Let me go back. Go back. The one that you just like that the arrow. This one. This so one. Like like finding your gap. Like just kind of give us some numbers and kind of go over that sure. a little bit more slowly, so we can make it sink a little bit. I know you, you can actually teach it, but. No, 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 no. I could, I could, I could definitely go over this a, a little bit more. So, you, um, what you're doing is you're, um, your, okay. So this is this is monthly recurring revenue. So say you have um, ten thousand. Say you say you have five thousand in recurring revenue. Okay, and this is your monthly expenses at ten thousand dollars. So your gap is a negative five thousand a month. So you have five thousand coming in, but you have ten thousand in expenses. Like your fixed expenses every month, the, 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 where, you, where whether you get a new project or not, you have to pay ten thousand every month. So your um, your your if you don't make any sales, if you don't have any more money coming in, you're down five thousand. Okay. So um, so now we know what our gap is because it all it is is your monthly expenses uh, minus uh, any recurring revenue you have coming in. So then here. Um, this is any cash you have saved, okay? And um, and then this is a little bit more complicated. I have a worksheet that I'll share with you guys on this too, if you want, um, that walks you through all this re really easily. So then, then you have any money saved, any work you have, any invoice work you might have coming in, so um, that you've already finished that you're just waiting on. 
and then th then you, if you have any big expenses coming up like a hotel bill but anyway so so this is pretty much just the cash you have saved plus maybe money you have coming in and then that's your available cash so now so say you have um uh ten thousand dollars in the bank and then you have two thousand dollars in invoice work okay so um So what you do then is you just take that, take that money. So your available cash then, I think this slide is better. So it's, so your, um, uh, I think this thing right here. So your monthly recurring revenue um, minus your divided by your gap. So you have, so yeah, so, so if you have 10,000 there, so if you have a five thousand dollar gap, okay, and then you have, um, and then you have uh, ten thousand saved, and you have two thousand that that you're getting that you have the invoice. So you have seventeen thousand here, all right, and then so you know you have set, and then you have um, five thousand here. So you just divide these numbers, and so five thousand divided by seventeen gives you like three point four. Something like that. Uh, rough math off the top of my head. Don't yell at me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's at least three. Um, so you know you have three months, you know, to um, uh, to run your business because you have cash. You have money coming in plus the cash you have. I have a worksheet that I'll share with you guys too that explains all this step by step. So it's pretty much dividing your um, dividing the money you have by uh, by how much you know your monthly expenses are, and it gives you how long it's called a runway. Gives you how long you can keep in business without having any new business come in. So it's just it, it's a security thing that says, okay, I know if the absolute worst happens, like I could still run my business for four months. And it's just you know, so when bad things happen, it's kind of reassuring to know that hey, it doesn't matter. So sucks but it's not going to hurt the business because i could still stay in business or it tells you that hey look if if i have a bad month i'm not going to be able to pay my bills so then you maybe need to start um uh saving a little bit more cutting back on some costs or something like that does that answer your question probably not that good yeah, it did, it did. Thank you. sure